What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Sherdog.com. Uh, and I am back with your top five bets for the weekend in the world of mixed martial arts. And obviously, over the, the Christmas period, we've had a, a, a bit of a, you know, a lighter time in terms of uh, all the, the mixed martial arts, especially at maybe the, the higher level with the, with the top promotions. I know uh, my guy, uh, Grabaka Hitman, is still putting out all these videos from, you know, these weird Russian... Yeah. <laughs> fights that are going on on Christmas Day and all of that but you know the the, the big stuff has uh, been taking a little bit of a break but we're kind of taking a break from that break here at the weekend with two very very big uh, Cage Warriors and uh, Risen slash Bellator cards I think there's an Octagon card on this weekend as well so plenty for uh, the old MMA fans who don't want the break from it to uh, to watch this weekend. I'm not sure if I'm one of them to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I have uh, I've previews out for for both of the cards I mentioned uh, as well up on Sherdog. Uh, but I'm here to give you my uh, my top bets, and uh, that's what he, uh, we should do. And we get we'll get straight into it here. The first bet uh, I'm going for is AJ Mickey, and. Uh, I'm going with three bets from the Bellator slash Risen card, and I'm going with two from the Cage Warriors card. And the reason I'm going with AJ McKee first is I, I and he's what well, price? Let me just check again. He's minus two ten. Um, I think that's a very good price, honestly, for uh for this fight. Like, are there ways AJ McKee can lose this fight? Look, there are ways everyone can lose any fight, and there are definitely ways possible when you're fighting someone. With the the ground game that uh, Satoshi has, uh, that you could lose. But if like if AJ McKee is in any way smart and but in any bit of an intelligent game plan, he should win this fight. He really, really should. Like if you look at Souza and you like, I've watched a few of his fights. He's very obviously very very good on the ground. People, you know. Uh, uh, more knowledge on the BJJ scene will probably tell you a, a lot more about him than, than I would be able to tell you but um, he is a guy who tries very hard to make his jiu-jitsu a part of it there's a lot of people who are expert jiu-jitsu artists and they, they I don't think they do enough to try to get it around but he does like he goes for takedowns he pulls guard he tries to make you sprawl and then pulls guard underneath he's very very strong has great dexterity and he goes for triangles he goes for wild stuff on the feet to try to get the fight to the ground and if he doesn't get it he very quickly kind of moves out and tries again and you know, he throws those big head kicks and now you know we've seen now through the years with uh Jacare and Verdum you know to, to kind of to lull you into to, to fighting that sort of game um and that's basically the key I think don't be lulled into that sort of game because if AJ Mickey is lulled into that and he does play on the ground with uh so he's a, he he will be in trouble but if he doesn't and he stays standing and he jabs his way in, he lands his shots. He, when he sprawls, he gets away out quickly, doesn't let uh, uh, Satoshi pull guard on him, doesn't let any of the tricks play off, like has, has watched him. Like, if you look at Susie, he's one of those guys as well that he's so, thrown so much stuff out there. It's almost like there's nothing can come that will surprise you. If you get me, in terms of maybe a submission or something, but in terms of how he sets things up or how wild he is, he's done it all in these fights, you know? And that's a very good thing if you're AJ McKee and if you're game planning well for this. So I think that's the, I think that's the way the fight will go. I think AJ McKee will strike with him and I think he'll beat him in the striking. You know, Satoshi is, I, I would say his striking is bad, but dangerous at times because he throws wildly at times he throws big head kicks and tries to you know tries to cause chaos and that can be very dangerous we've seen it down through the years that that sort of thing can be very very dangerous uh but yeah I, i'm going for aj mckee on that one at a, a minus 210 um the next bet i'm going for and this is kind of i'm taking maybe a little bit of a punt on this but i'm going for uh social kim um at plus 155 and he's taking on juan arcaleta uh, at bantamweight and um watching him fight he's a very very good fighter and i think he's actually a kind of a bad matchup for arcaletta now that's not to say arcaletta is the favorite for this you know it's not that's not to say he can't win or anything like that but i think when you're an aggressive sort of fighter like kim is and you watch arcaletta who is wild 
You know, and when I say aggressive for Kim, they're both aggressive fighters, but Kim is more of like a a go forward take you down sort of aggressive whereas Arcaleta is more of a I'll throw a load of shots and hope three or four of them land sort of aggressive one aggressive is usually bad against the other one now which one will that be who knows we, we'll, I suppose that's why we have the fight and that's why we'll find out but I think the fact that Kim loves to walk forward into takedowns picks lads up slams them from sequences like where Arcaleta will come in and try to throw his big shots. I think that's just, it's hard to look at these two and not imagine that happening at some stage during the fight. Um, Kim is a real juggernaut, like a real juggernaut of a go-forward wrestler type of fighter. Uh, and he's active on top as well, very good ground and pound. Um, you know, when he doesn't get takedowns, as happens a lot in MMA all over the place, but he ends up in a lot of clinches when he can't get the takedown. Um, and he has a couple of takedowns from the clinch as well. And as I said, when he gets in the clinch, or when he gets on top, he's very active. And that's a you know a very very interesting thing for you know if this goes to a, a decision or anything like that. It's uh, if it's a close enough fight, who's going to win at that uh, activity in the clinch or on on top when it goes to the ground might be the difference uh, in this one. And I suppose look for Arculeta, he'll be looking for the power. He'll be looking to switch stances and those big shots. Uh, they'll both be looking to switch stances, I think. Um, but like, as I said, he does get clinched up in fights. Watch a lot of his previous fights. He does get taken down. And that's because he loves to attack with power. Um, and if Kim can kind of play off of that, I think it'll be it'll be his fight to lose, honestly. And I'm surprised to see that the betting uh, was... Uh, was like this, was this kind of far apart. Um, with Arcaleta, though, I, I think a big part of his game as well, you can't let him get into his rhythm. Like I, I said on the preview show, I think, but like his rhythm is kind of a mid-rhythm rhythm. You know, um, uh, uh, Robert Whitaker did it very well against Yoel Romero and other people do it. It's, it's a very hard thing to actually master, but I think he's one of the guys who's very, very good at it as well. And Kim can't let him do that, I don't think. You know, Kim is going to have to attack, maybe even not even at attack him uh, in that sort of way, but wait for him to attack you and then take him down off of him, which is kind of a change up from his normal game. But I think he can do that, honestly, and I think he can do it both ways. I think he can get takedowns uh, in both ways, and um, yeah, I think he'll, uh, I think he'll walk forward, and I, I think he'll, uh, I think he'll win the fight. So that, that's my uh, second bet, a plus one five five. Um, the next one I'm going for is it's not the biggest price in the world, but it's minus 410 for Patricio Ferreira. Uh, uh, look, famous last words, as, as they always are in MMA. And I've had a few bad ones this year, but this is as close to a dead cert as you're going to get in, in mixed martial arts, I think. Um, you find uh, Clever Koike, uh, whose name I probably absolutely destroyed there. But he is like the exact fighter you would want to put in with Patricky Pit or Patricio Pitbull even to uh to make him look good. You know, he throws these front kicks down through the middle, tries to fight long, um and it that is not a good thing. Even though you think about Patricio, he's like not the biggest guy in the world, fought down in weights and you know he's obviously at Federer and he's well he's fought up at weights I suppose, but he's not he's not even the biggest featherweight in the world, I don't think. But his ability to watch lads coming in and avoid him whether it's wrestling or striking or whatever is brilliant. It's really, really good, and that's what Kleber will be trying to do. Very good wrestling, very good on top, and I, I just feel like that's going to be so hard to um, make useful against Patricio. Simple as that. Um, like Kaike loves to attack from the half guard. He loves to get hit and arm jokes. Really good in scrambles. Really good at taking the back and pulling guard and stuff like that. But like. All of that stuff I just named there, like, is any of that going to happen against Patricio? You know, is he, even if there is scramble, now there might be scrambles in the fight, but like, is he going to win the scrambles against Patricio? I find it very hard to see that. I find it really, really hard to see that. Um, he's not good on the feet. Not good. Like, really atrocious, I would say. Really bad on the feet. And Patricio, like, He's he's a guy I think who's underrated all around, but on the feed as well, especially the way he can control fights, is brilliant. And I think he will control this one. I think he'll land his jab. I think he'll land his shots. Like, the further this fight goes, the less success I think Clever will have and the more success Patricio will have. Simple, simple as that. 
Um, I think, like, this is also a sort of fight where I genuinely think that Patricio, if he wanted to, now I'm not sure if he will or not, but I think he could turn up the pace and put him out of there pretty quickly. Like, it, it reminds me a little bit of, you know, when uh, Jose Aldo, I always use this example, but when he went out of the title picture for a moment at Federer, you know, he fought Jeremy Stevens and a couple of other lads and absolutely decimated lads, you know? Uh, I feel like that's what we could have here now. Patricio will need to go out and decimate him to do that, but he is a very respectful fighter and he, he fights a very smart game, so I'm not sure if he will go out uh, and, you know, put himself at risk or anything like that, but I think if he did, uh, I think he'd probably win and probably win pretty handily. So, yeah, definitely Patricio in that. Not the biggest price in the world, but, um, yeah, I'm going for it. I'm going for it anyway. Uh, so that's the tree from uh, Bellator. We'll, we'll look more at Bellator in a second here again. Um, the fourth bet of the week, I am going for Sam Creasy. And, you know, Sam Creasy, uh, he, he didn't win the last fight. Um, but I can I chat Jack, obviously, for the for the title. I'm, I'm looking at the bet now. He's actually, the, the bet has changed since I was looking at this uh, last night. He was minus 135. He's actually into minus 115 now. And they're both even at minus 115. And that's obviously even better. Um, I, I think, oh, right... Having, I went back and I watched a bit of that fight because it was so long ago. I didn't. I don't think it makes like the most sense to watch the exact fight again. But uh, I, I watched a bit of it before I did the preview show, and I watched a bit of it afterwards again. And like there was a lot of rest, and there was a lot of like um, there was a lot of deciding who was going to be the aggressor in that fight. I suppose, and Shag Shag Hack won a, a good portion of that. I think it's going to be a lot less like that this time. And the reason I say that is because I think Sam Creasy, we, we talked about Patricio Pitbull in the last fight trying to control fights. I think Sam Creasy has gotten a lot better at, at not even controlling fights, but attempting to control fights. And I think if that is the way he fights here, I, I think he'll be hard to beat. I really do. I think he's improved an awful lot uh, over the years. He's like, as well, you have to think about it at Cage Warriors. The level of opponents he's been fighting for a long time. Like, a lot of people might know the names, but you go back and look at them. And if you actually delve into the names, you've actually delve into the fights. You look at some of the fights those people have had before they fought him and he himself, obviously. It's a very, very high level. Very high. You know, for that level, it's a very, very high level. And. I think the way he has kind of consistently stayed in that picture. No, we've had the weird fights and the weight misses and, you know, winning the titles and losing. And we've had all of that. And, you know, that makes you stronger. And if, if you're still there and you're still doing it uh, at this stage, it, that says something about you. Now, not to say Shaz Hack hasn't done that, but he's gone out, gone to other places, come back. Um, but I, I'm you're looking at that, right, and you think who has made the biggest changes or adjustments to their game since the first fight. Um, and I would say Sam Greasy. Now, does that mean he'll 100% win? It doesn't, no. But um, I I think he will. <laughs> I'd say I'll, I'll put it as simply as that. I don't need to, to break it down much more than that. I, I think he will. I, like, I think if... Uh, right, here's, here's a big key as well. If he can... If there's someone takes someone down or if there's a scramble or if there's a clinch against the, the cage and Creasy wins that right and maybe he gets a couple of minutes on top or there, it happens twice or three times and he wins all of them I think that's going to be a big big moment in that fight right and it could be the same the other way around for Hack but I have a, I have a feeling Creasy is like Shaq from, from memory now I've uh, gone back and uh, now watch all of his fights but a fast enough starter and maybe Creasy that wouldn't be the biggest case for him. I think he is more like a, a rhythm fighter and fights, you know, the, tries to fight the same pace throughout the whole fight, especially, as I mentioned recently, he does try to control the fights a lot more. I think if he can kind of meet that fast enough start and win those early battles, as I just mentioned there, especially with the wrestling, as it pertains, I suppose, to the last fight, uh, I think that'll be a big boost for him, and I think he'll, he can win the fight because of that. So, yeah, I'm going for Sam Creasy, minus 115. Um, I just think he's probably a little closer to what his best is than he was before so yeah Sam Creasy I'm going for that and 
the flyer of the week. The, look, the flyer of the week's not a massive flyer this week because there's no you, there's there's no prop odds out for any of these events. So uh, it's only it's only plus two twenty. It's only plus two twenty. The uh, the flyer of the week this week. But I'm going for Chuck Campbell. Uh, to beat Modestus Bukowskis. Now, maybe there'll be a knockout, and if there is a knockout closer to the time, we can, like, adjust it or whatever. Maybe, you know, if he's plus 220 to win the fight, he's probably plus maybe 350 to get the knockout. So, that'd be, that's my flyer of the week, if that's the case. So, I, I do think, um, I, I just have a feeling Chuck Campbell is going to knock out Bukowskis. I really, really do. Um, I think Bukowskis is a very, very talented fighter. Uh, he didn't look amazing in his last outing in Cage Warriors, but... He was coming back off that horrific knee injury. He's come back off a long time out, and he'll either look great after that, or you know, we'll we'll see how the fight we'll we'll see how the fight goes. Um, the reason I'm giving Chuck Campbell here is, I think, but like Bukowskis is one of those lads. I think Sean O'Malley is a little bit like this as well, where they have all the skill in the world, but sometimes like the body maybe lets them down, whether it is taking a big shot or whether it's you know getting injured now the the knee injury for Bukowski is a bit different but we've seen Sean O'Malley you know he kicked the leg a couple of times and it's I got badly hurt in fights and it's I I feel like I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm being unfair on Bukowski but that's how I kind of see him sometimes I see him as a guy who's so much talent but I remember hearing I I think it was Luke Thomas talk about it before to have like the not not just like the, he used to use the, the, the phrase the proclivity for violence, but also like having the ability to both inflict it and take it. And but like it's not to say that because because has any ability to take it or anything like that, but there is a certain kind of physiological level that certain people can take, and then there is a certain level that some people can't take. And in my opinion, maybe my opinion is wrong, and I hope it is proved wrong over the next while. I, I just feel like Pekowskis is one of those lads who maybe can't take it as much, and it's not a mental or a thing or anything. Like that. I think it's purely physical. Um, and when I look at Chuck Campbell, I just think he's dangerous. Like he's only what six fights into his career or something like that. Very, very few fights. Came out and got a big knockout last time. Out myself and Brad were talking about it on the preview, uh, and I think he's a real, real dangerous fighter. Really has good hands. He's training. He's training AKA, isn't he? He's um, he's wrestling is good. He's defensive wrestling is very, very good. He is like he is a guy. I think even if he loses this fight, um, I think he's a guy in years to come who will climb the ranks, and I think we'll see him in the UFC. I think we'll see him fighting in in. You know, maybe hold on, uh, hold on to Cage Warriors for another while, but in you know uh, the big shows uh, after that, then uh, as well, he's a very, very good fighter, and you know, <sighs> it's very dangerous because you look at this right, and you're thinking, you see Chuck Campbell in a couple of these fights, and you're God, take that guy down. But then Bukowskis is the type of fighter who loves to control on the feet. A lot of, a lot of control talk in this uh, preview. He loves to control on the feet, and he loves to uh, you know to to strike. And he, I think he's going to have to adjust things to not win the fight against Campbell. He can definitely win it on, on defeat, but to make it uh, an easier win, I suppose. Um, but I don't think he will. I think he's going to fight him on defeat, and that's danger. Very, 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 very dangerous against Chuck Campbell. So a plus 220, or maybe, you know, plus 350 possibly for the knockout. I go, I go for the knockout if that uh, uh, bet comes up. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the flyer of the week this week. Uh, right, let's run through some of the other prices and we'll see if we see anything that uh, that sticks out. Uh, one of the ones as well, the, the, there is an undercard. Uh, Luis Gustavo against Johnny Chase, one that's popping up here. Um, minus 140 for Chase. I like in that price. I, I really, really like that price. So that's one that I would be uh, that I would be looking at there. There's an octagon card as well uh this weekend and there looks to be some good talent on my guy Alex Lahore is on that again against uh Matthias Juracek. Uh Martin Pipek is on the car. There's there's some uh, there's some good fighters uh, on that one. I see Lee Chadwick who's obviously fought, you know, around he's on it he's fighting Rafael Xavier uh and he's uh, an underdog there at plus uh one ninety. So that's an interesting bet maybe to uh to have a look at too. And then we come to uh to Cage Warriors so bit surprising here that Christian Leroy Duncan is such a big favourite over Jesse Taylor. I thought he'd be a favourite, but minus 500 and plus 375 for Jesse Taylor. Now, I do think Christian Leroy Duncan will win, but I like if you're searching for a flyer bet this week, you can go further than Jesse Taylor. Like, what's to say Jesse Taylor's not going to take him down and just wrestle him for uh, for five rounds? I could see it. 
I could definitely see it happening. I know that a lot of people don't believe in that, but I, Jesse Taylor is a good fighter, and Christian here, I don't going to still very young in his career. This is a massive test for him, and if he comes through with the kind of verve that this um, betting price would suggest, I, I don't think he's long for for this uh, promotion. If we, if we want to put it that way, I think the UFC will be taking him, but um, I would probably not bet in that one, honestly. Uh, I, I that price. Price seems off. I do think Christian Ayer and Uncle will win, but that's a massive price. Uh, Thomas Granval against Wilson Hayes. Hayes is the favourite, minus 125. Granval, uh, minus 105. I think that's just about correct. Uh, I was impressed with, with, with Granval, but I don't know if he's active enough, especially for a guy like Hayes. Um, but maybe the fact that Hayes is more active will make Granval more active. I suppose we'll have to see on that one. Hayes is getting on now as well, but yeah, I, I, I'll go for him in that one. Uh, we talked about obviously Campbell and Bukowskis, and we talked about Creasy and Hack. Uh, Chase and Blair minus four hundred against Helio Her- uh, Hernandez. Uh, Blair is the the training partner of Paddy Pimblett, who's doing a lot of wrestling and stuff with him. Be interesting to see how he looks there. Um, Imra Samnez is an underdog, surprisingly enough to me. Plus one thirty against minus one sixty. Adam Meschini. Uh, I'd probably go for Samnez in that one. Um, Orlando Prince against Samuel Bark. That's that's a potential banger, that one. Bark is minus 500 plus uh, 375. I think Bark will win it, but that seems a bit wide as well to me. Darren Short is a minus 185 favourite against uh, Guilherme Candera, plus 155. Hmm, interesting. Like Stewart hasn't been on the best run in the world at the moment. Maybe there's a bit of value there on the underdog. Um, and a couple more. Giordano against Fletcher, plus uh, 375 for Giordano. Fletcher, minus 500. If anyone heard the, the previous show with Brad, you know, he was calling this his, uh, his main event of the, of the weekend and all, and that Giordano is supposed to be a real, real handful. So that plus 375 price might be looking very, very good pretty soon. Maybe that's a, a good kind of flyer of the week as well. I, I like Fletcher, and I think he'll pop back after, uh, after his recent loss, but... Um. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's a, a big underdog bet there. Uh, Harilla is minus one sixty against plus one thirty. Damon Wilson, like Harilla, needs to win this fight. He needs to bounce back here. He hasn't had a great one run recently. Um, and the last one in O'Neill Brown minus four hundred plus three hundred for Junior Orolio. Uh, and that should be a good fight. Big fan of O'Neill Brown. Uh, over and risen then. Um, the. Where are we? AJ McKee. Are we, so we talked about, uh, obviously we talked about these. AJ McKee can be gotten out at minus 188 here in one place uh, against Satoshi. We talked about, obviously, Patri- uh, Patricio. His price can be got. He can get, be got down as far as minus 333 three, three here. So that's a very, very good price if you can get that. Um, I was thinking about putting Haraguchi as one of my bets. He can be got at minus 400. If you can get him at that, take him. He's beaten uh, Hiram, uh, Hiramasa twice before. Um... The Arculeta uh, and Kimbet is, is pretty consistent. Well, it's minus one two five one plus minus one, or sorry plus one two five for Kim plus two one twenty plus one four five. Um, Arculeta is around the minus one fifty to minus one seventy five favorite. I, I, you know, as I said, I like him in that one. Uh, Rabbits above against Takeda. I really like Rabbits above in that as well. He's around the minus three hundred there uh, with Takeda around the plus two hundred t- plus two thirty. Um, and other than that, Rogerio Bantarin is on the card. He's a minus two hundred favorite against Yuki Motoya. Um, John Dodson is on the card as well. He's a big favorite, minus four six five against uh, Hideo Takoro. Um, Nico Inoue is on the card as well, minus uh, three ten. And uh, yeah, that's a uh, junior Taffa, uh, an underdog. Plus 120 against Tatsuya Sodura. So, yeah, that's about it. And, uh, you know, some good fights, some fun fights this weekend in the world of mixed martial arts. My five bets, I'll go through them again for the weekend. Uh, AJ Mickey around the minus 210 mark to win straight up there. Uh, Kim plus 155. Uh, Patricio Ferreira minus 410. Sam Creasy minus 135. And Chuck Campbell plus 220. All right. I leave it there, everyone. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everyone out there. Best of luck with the bets this weekend. And I'll see you all next time.